I'm Norman Gunson, and this is my fabulous gold Logie winners type dressing room. <laughs> Isn't it good? <laughs> you get free cordial and everything. They charge you for the water to put in it, but lucky I've got a sweet tooth. Well, half a one anyway. The filling fell out yesterday over breakfast. I thought I'd swallowed the plastic football out of the cornflakes packet. Mm. Of course, you've got to be a big star to get a dressing room like this. I mean, when Mark Holden comes out here, he has to use the cleaner's room out the back. Maybe that's why he's so pink and shiny. But being Australia's number one media personality isn't all free cordial and staying up late to watch the midnight movie. There are things you have to remember, like always have a clean hanky for singing guests at dribble and how to divide three sausages between four talking guests without starting a fight. There is a lot of maths involved in getting to the top. I realised pretty early on in my career that if I wanted to get anywhere, I'd have to learn how to use numbers. I mean, it's not much good having your own fabulously well-paid tonight show if you don't know what time it starts. And also, it comes in very handy for checking your pay packet. Especially when they always pay me in fantail wrappers. Oh, if anyone's interested, I've got lots of swaps. Actually, I was pretty lucky, because my mother was very good at maths. She, uh, she must have known that I was going to tell you all about my childhood, because she kept all the details written down. Um, actually, I've still, I've still got them here somewhere, yes. My first photo album. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's not me on the cover, but not with curls like that. No, no, my, my mum is a real stickler for tidy hair. She used to make me put brill cream on and everything. Oh, and of course I wasn't allowed to eat grass either. No, no, that's um, Auntie Pat's pet sheep. Uh, he's called Norman as well. <laughs> she actually bought this album herself to keep pictures of him in. Uh, but um, he did something naughty on the camera while she wasn't looking. And uh, so she gave the photo album to mum to keep pictures of me in. Gee, just as well that the sheep had a nice name like Norman, eh? Otherwise, Mum might have had to call me Fluffy or Snow White or something. Mum used to take one picture of me each year and put my weight underneath it. Um, oh, no, that's not me there. That, that's me there. That was when I was born and I weighed four kilograms. It's Mum. She lives over in Malta now with Uncle Remo. Oh, here I am at my first birthday. Uh, can you tell which one's me, eh? <laughs> oh, and I weighed 10 kilograms. <laughs> oh, this is when I was two years old. Um, and I was 13 kilograms. It's quite big for my age. I used to always go down to the South Coromel Baths, you know, until they turned it into a trout hatchery. Here I am, three. Uh, I think that's me there. That's at my third birthday party. 15 kilograms. Oh, here I am when I was four years old, and you can see that the entertainer was in my blood even then. Uh, I think I was singing, um, I, don't, I don't think it was Salute to Abba, I think I was singing Delilah there. As you can see, I was already using the more undetectable hand gestures, even at that early age. 17 kilograms there. Oh, yes, yes. Um, Mum had this bar graph made up uh, so that she could see if my weight was going up evenly and what what she did was she put my age underneath and up the top she put my weight and so she could see if i was progressing in weight evenly you know uh, see when i was one i was ten and a half kilograms two i was 13 kilograms three i was 15 kilograms four 17 kilograms five i was uh, Oh, well, if you're wondering why my weight suddenly went up so high when I was five, um, it's because I used to play cops and robbers a lot with Dogface Wilson next door. And um, on my fifth birthday, uh, I was a goodie, and he tied me up in the garage and said I had to chew my way through, you know. Well, um, by the time he came back and explained he meant chew my way through the rope, uh, I'd already eaten two spare tyres and ten centimetres of the garage wall. <laughs> Mum was really angry with me because I wasn't supposed to eat between meals. So, um, in actual fact, only 19 kilograms is really me. <laughs> you know, the other six kilograms are 
two spare tyres and 10 centimetres of the garage wall. <laughs> it's exciting what you can show with bar graphs and numbers. <laughs> oh, people are always asking me, how come I am so well dressed? <laughs> what is my secret? Well, I always feel it's very important to buy clothes that fit properly, you know, just big enough so you can fit your ABBA t-shirt and scarf underneath on cold days. The big secret, of course, is knowing what size your body is. Well, of course, I always measure myself with a tape measure. Oh, one year, I remember, I, I tried measuring myself with a ruler, but that's no good, you see, because you can't get it round the corners. Yeah, all my school shirts that year used to stick out 10 centimetres on either side. So, I decided to measure myself for my first school uniform. Oh, you can imagine how excited I was when Mum told me that I could have a school uniform of my very own. Because <laughs> up to then I thought I was going to have to share one with old Fatso next door, you know. I even tried it on once. Uh, the belt was a pretty good fit, till I realised it was his watch band. Well, I made up my mind that my uniform was going to be the right size for my body. But what size was I? I mean, bottles of cordial have the size printed on the label, but I couldn't find my label anywhere. I guess it must have soaked off in the bath. So, I decided to find what size I was by measuring myself. Um, I borrowed Mum's tape measure from a sewing basket. Uh, she makes all the budgies clothes herself. Isn't she clever? She actually made him a Superman outfit once, but the uh, cape got stuck around his wings and he flew into the toaster. Still, He's made a lot of new friends since, you know, all the other blackbirds. Uh, then I started measuring myself and writing down the measurements. All you have to do is see how much of the tape covers the uh, part of you that you're measuring and write down the number of units. Uh, the numbers on the tape tell you that. It's pretty easy. Uh, although sometimes you do need someone to hold the tape for you. I was going to ask Mum if she, she wouldn't mind, uh, except she was out with Uncle Remo and his paper run. So uh, I use some of the skill and determination that has got me where I am today and did it myself. Uncle Sandro has a clothes store downtown, see? So uh, Mum sent me down with the milk money to buy my uniform. Uh, the milkman didn't mind not getting paid when Mum said it was for my first school uniform because he realised that it'd mean I'd be going to school at long last and would stop hiding his empty milk bottles. <laughs> well, I had the money safe in one pocket uh, but when I put my hand in the other pocket, it was empty. All the measurements had gone. Quick as a mozzie in a mortine factory, I raced back home, but it was too late. Mum had picked up the sheet of paper, thinking it was an old love letter of Dad's, and used it to line the budgie's cage. By the time I got there, all the numbers were smudged. Pretty unlucky, huh? But I had an idea. I raced back to the shop, and I asked Uncle Sandro if I could borrow his tape measure to measure myself again. That's the sort of quick thinking that separates the stars from the rest of them. Hmm. Of course, knowing your measurements, isn't all there is to be well dressed. <laughs> the people who make your clothes put uh, labels on them so you can see what size they are. But the labels they put it on the factory uh, don't always have your actual measurement, but just a size letter. Like this one, size M. It's pretty confusing, huh? Well, you know, that's what I thought until I saw this chart. See, all the letters do is represent measurements. Say, for instance, um, it said SB. Well, SB means a 71 centimetre chest and a 30 centimetre collar. Um, or if it said B, it'd mean you'd have a 76 centimetre chest and a 33 centimetre collar. <laughs> you know, all the, all the letters do is represent a size in the same way that um, footballers' numbers represent what position they play. Up the mighty blueies! Of course, being a well-dressed multimedia personality, I get invited to a lot of parties. It's pretty good. 
Sometimes they serve really exotic food too, you know, like fairy bread and paddle pops on plates. Oh, and uh, sometimes uh, when we finish the party games and there's nothing else to do because someone spilt chip me the ice cream on the ABBA record, people ask me for my autograph. <laughs> Last week I signed four sausage rolls and put my thumbprint in three chocolate crackles. <laughs> of course, I give a lot of parties myself. Um, lucky I'm pretty good at maths, you know, because when you give a party yourself, you've got to work out exactly how much food and stuff to make for the people you've invited. I found out how to do that when Mum let me have a party of my own and I did all the cooking myself. <laughs> Not many people realise that the pineapple donut we know and love is just today's version of Granny Gunson's Pineapple Delight. <laughs> um, I actually uh, got the recipe for the Pineapple Delight from Granny Gunson herself. It took her a long time to remember the exact ingredients, but of course with all the noise she couldn't think straight, you know. But she got it right as soon as she switched off the motorbike. I decided that if we were going to have a really good party, we'd need three pieces of pineapple delight each. But Granny's recipe was for only ten pieces, and there were ten people coming to the party. Well, uh, that'd mean that we'd only have one piece of pineapple delight each. <laughs> That's no good. I mean, give them one piece each, and they'll start eating the lettuce out of Mum's hanging vegetable garden before you can say, watch out, they're plastic. And some people, pigs. If there were ten people at the party and they had three pieces of pineapple delight each, that meant I had to make, um, thirty pieces. Well, how could I get thirty pieces out of a recipe for ten? Quick as a budgie running for a bus, I realised what I had to do. To get thirty pieces from a recipe for ten, I had to multiply all the ingredients by three. Cause three times ten makes thirty. Pretty simple, huh? I was so excited about the party, I forgot to put the holes in the pineapple delight before I put them in the oven. <laughs> I mean, pineapple delight without a hole in the middle just isn't right. You know, sort of like mum without her hair rollers and slippers. <laughs> Even gold logie winners need play lunch. So, everyone got their three pieces of pineapple delight and a glass of cordial to soften it up a bit and everyone had a really great time. And all because I use maths to make the exact amount of pineapple delight. <laughs> uh, aha, I hear you saying to yourselves. Or was that Abba clearing their throats in the next dressing room? It's all very well him telling us about maths and pineapple delight, but he was going to tell us how maths helped him become an award-winning multimedia personality. You're right, I did. And the Gunston always keeps his word. Well, usually. It all started with 10-pin bowling. <laughs> Singing in the bath and at the dinner table wasn't enough anymore. I was looking for that break that would make me a household name. You know, like Vegemite. Well, I heard that the South Coromel 10-pin bowling club was putting on a show. You've heard of Snow White on Ice? Well, this was called Snow White Goes Bowling. And they announced that whoever was the best bowler in the club would get the leading part. What a chance. I was determined that the best bowler would be me, so that I could be the star of the show. The only problem was that I'd never been 10-pin bowling before. Um, this was where I was saved by maths. When I got to the bowling centre and saw everyone knocking down the 10-pins, I thought it looked as easy as eating a Chico roll no hands. But when I'd paid for a game, and hired the special shoes and ball, I realised that 
Maths is essential to being a good bowler. There's a the shoes for a start. They've got to be the right size for your feet. And the ball's got to be the right weight for your muscles. You've got to work out how many steps you need in your run-up. And when you've got that all right, you've got to be able to add up your score properly. Well, it took a bit of experimenting to get everything right, but I worked it out in the end, and with the right size shoes, the right weight ball, and the right length run-up, I was right. to be in pictures, you're wonderful to see. You ought to be in pictures, how beautiful you would be. Your voice would thrill a nation, your face would be adored. You'd make a great sensation with wealth and fame, your reward. And if you should kiss the way you kiss when we are all alone, you'd make every girl and man a fan worshipping at your throne. You ought to shine as brightly as Jupiter and Mars. You ought to be in pictures, my star of stars. In fact, with a little help from maths, I took to bowling like a fish to a chip and won the club championship. Oh, truly, really, really. So they let me be the star of the show. <laughs> and Mum let me stay up late for the clapping and everything. The heat of the show was a song specially written for it by Mrs. Queen, my maths teacher. Oh, she wasn't the real queen or anything. Uh, you, di you did have to bow to her, but of uh, course she was really small, and unless you got down low, you couldn't hear what your homework was. Oh, it's a terrific song. See, I can almost hear it now. Was that the toasted rissole sandwich I had for lunch? When kids go down to the shops today, they're in for a big surprise. When kids go down to the shops today, they better not close their eyes. Before they blink, the chocolate shrink. It's hard to tell just what the shops sell. The day's a day the kids must learn to measure. They don't write songs like that anymore. Well, Mrs. Queen doesn't anyway. Not since she went heavily into rock. I told her she should have got those brakes fixed on a bike. Anyway, that's how maths helped me become Australia's number one multimedia personality. And maths can help you too. All you've got to do is remember that everything's got a size that's right for you. Whether it's a um, size for shoes or um, a pineapple donut. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> well, well, I've got to go now, because I've got to go and do a show. And if I keep the audience waiting much longer, they'll get restless. And Mrs. Lewis says it takes her hours to iron those teeth marks out of the plastic chairs. May the good Lord smile upon you and not let you get kept in till next time we meet. Bye bye. go down to the shops today, they're in for a big surprise. When kids go down to the shops today, they better not close their eyes. Before they blink, the chocolate shrink. It's hard to tell just what the shops sell. The day's a day the kids must learn to measure.